With the recent announcement that Lords of the Fallen 2 is finally confirmed as being under development and on its way, I thought it would be worth revisiting Lords of the Fallen to see if A. it got fixed properly after release, and B. how it feels in 2020. Is it worth your time to play? When Lords of the Fallen released in October 2014, it was dubbed with the label of a Dark Souls ripoff. Since then, there have been a lot of other games released which have similar elements to Dark Souls. So much so that there is a genre called Souls-like, which is an accepted term and it's no longer used as an insult, providing the game in question is good of course. Emulating or taking inspiration from Dark Souls is more acceptable these days, so let's take a look at Lords of the Fallen again. On release the game was plagued with bugs. There were screen tearing, respawning as a corpse, exploitable boss mechanics or bosses that flat out did nothing. By the end of November 2014 the majority of these issues had been resolved, but by then a lot of people had already put the game down never to return. It received ok reviews at release, but nothing mind blowing. So what about now? After all is said and done, how is the game? Is it worth your time now that you know that number 2 is on its way? In this video I'll give you my thoughts and toward the end I'll talk about what I'd like to see in the second game. Lords of the Fallen begins with you picking your class which dictates your initial gameplay experience. You are unable to create your own character, but the progression system is pretty extensive. You can pick up loot which includes weapons, shields, armour pieces and a gauntlet which gives you access to unlockable and upgradable magic abilities. The game is based on a power fantasy which allows you to become infinitely more powerful than you were when you start out in the game. The combat is slow and deliberate as you might expect from a souls like game. You have the ability to block, dodge, shield bash, kick, shield charge or blast your enemies with magical abilities. There was also a backstab ability if you time your movement well and you could get behind your enemies. From a power fantasy aspect, I would definitely say mission accomplished. For me however, the combat in places was a little too slow. Recently I've been spoiled by games like Neo 2 and Sekiro so perhaps my preferences have changed, but in places the game felt like the only way to beat certain enemies, especially the ones with tower shields was to wait out their animations and then try to get in a single attack before they raise their shield again, rinse and repeat. Certain enemies could be particularly frustrating on that front. In terms of the graphics, for a 6 year old game I'd say it holds up pretty well. The setting of the game feels good and the enemy types are pretty varied in terms of their look and attack patterns. The audio was decent too, it wasn't the best I've ever heard but the music fits well with the setting of the game. My vow of defiance. Overall the combat is good, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed my time in Lords of the Fallen, but I did have a couple of things I would like to see improvements on when it comes to number 2. The boss fights. This is actually similar to a more recent game I reviewed, Mortal Shell. The same issue presents itself here. None of the boss fights were insanely difficult, which to me is one of the most important aspects of a soul like game. Overcoming the boss fights and that sense of achievement is one of the biggest things I want from a souls like that and the feeling of progression. I had exactly the same issue in Lords of the Fallen that I had with Mortal Shell. Some of the room scenarios or basic respawnable enemies were much more challenging to fight than the bosses were. I was able to kill the majority of the bosses I faced on my second attempt and some of them on my first, whereas the tower shield enemies put me down over and over again before I managed to adjust and overcome. I did like a couple of the boss mechanics however, I won't go into any spoilers here just in case, but some of the bosses are really interesting to fight, it's not simply a case of finding gaps in their attack sequences. The main issue for me with the difficulty of the game was the inconsistency. In some areas I felt completely overpowered and then suddenly I would hit a brick wall where I felt for some time I could not progress. In some games this is called a skill check and would usually be a boss fight, something put into the game deliberately to halt further progress until you've learned a mechanic or leveled up enough to meet the coming challenges. In Lords of the Fallen, on occasion the difficulty would spike, but then go back to normal and I'd go back to feeling overpowered. It felt a little out of sequence in places. So is Lords of the Fallen worth playing? I would say yes if you enjoy souls like games and you missed this one and you're looking for something new to put some time into without laying out for a full price title. 
The bugs, screen tearing and frame drops are nowhere near what they were on release. It's not perfect, but I wouldn't say there's anything game breaking that I've seen at least. There were still some frame drops on my playthrough, but again, I'm on an old PS4, so that might not be reflective of the situation if you're on another platform or on a PS4 Pro. If you enjoy Souls-like and power fantasy games where you can develop and upgrade your character, then yes, it's worth a look. With it being an old game now, the price point is pretty low, so it's a low risk investment on your part. If you've played it and put it down because of the bugs, then maybe take another look, see how you feel. You might feel differently now that the improvements are in place. What I would like to see in Lords of the Fallen 2 is faster and more fluid combat. Chaining attacks together more quickly if possible, with lighter, quicker weapons. With the heavier weapons, I would like to feel the impact more. If I'm going to wait out a long animation to wind up a heavy hit, I want the payoff when it connects, staggering enemies more frequently and leaving them open to follow up attacks. That was my issue with the shield guys in Lords of the Fallen 1. I could knock their shields aside but my follow up attacks were often too slow to capitalise on it. I really enjoyed the flexibility to upgrade your character as you wanted but it might be nice if there was some kind of character creation available, but this isn't a deal breaker for me. Overall I'm personally looking forward to what the new Hexworks team comes up with on Lords of the Fallen 2. From their recent announcement it seems like they've got some real pros working on the game. I hope you found the video useful, leave me a like and comment if you don't mind, sub if you're new and I'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, bye bye now.